Whenever we have a Daniel in Revelation seminar, we often begin in the book of Daniel, more specifically in Daniel chapter 2, which features Nebuchadnezzar's image. As a Seventh-day Adventist, you should be familiar with this image. However, if you're not familiar with it, stay tuned because I'm going to reveal to you the meaning of this image right now. In Daniel 2, we read about King Nebuchadnezzar. He was the king of Babylon, and God actually revealed to this pagan king the future of the world through a dream. The problem was, the king didn't recall what the dream was about, but he knew it was important. However, God had revealed the dream and the interpretation to Daniel the prophet, and here's what Daniel told the king. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image, this great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So what does this dream actually mean? Well, in the next few verses, Daniel reveals to the king that he represents the head of gold. Now, even though the head of gold represents Nebuchadnezzar, by the mere fact that he's the king of Babylon, we must understand that it also represents his kingdom. Then Daniel reveals that another kingdom would come after Babylon. And according to the historical record, the next kingdom symbolized by the arms and chest of silver would represent the dual threat Medo-Persian Empire. Now, after the fall of Medo-Persia, another kingdom would rise to rule the known world, and that nation, which was represented as the belly and thighs of brass, would be Greece. And finally, the empire symbolized as iron, and succeeding Greece was the Roman Empire. Here we should also understand that this iron goes from its legs all the way into its feet and toes. This tells us that Rome, in some form or fashion, is the last world power. We also see that when you get to the feet and toes, that there is an infusion of clay mixed therein. What you must understand is this clay represents the papacy, which ruled parts of the Roman Empire. Also understanding that this infusion occurs in the ten toes, we must understand that the ten toes represents ten nations that will make an alliance with Rome in the last days. And thus we see the ten toes along with the iron and clay represents an end time alliance of nations that will persecute anyone who doesn't worship Satan in the last days. However, regarding this end time alliance, Daniel then tells us that they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. This reveals to us that this end time alliance will not last. They will not cleave one to another. And finally, we see that at the end of time, a rock comes and destroys all these kingdoms. This rock represents the last kingdom, which is the kingdom of God. When Jesus Christ comes, he comes as King of Kings and Lord of Lords to rule this world for eternity. So now we should see that this image that King Nebuchadnezzar dreamed about represents the world's superpowers, beginning with the Babylonian Empire all the way down to the end time alliance of nations that gets destroyed when Jesus comes back. And ladies and gentlemen, we understand that God gave this dream to King Nebuchadnezzar. But what you must understand is that this dream wasn't just for King Nebuchadnezzar. This dream was for you and me.